Good morning, everybody. It's a, a great privilege to be here with you today. Um, this time last year, we were in a different zone where we were, didn't know whether we'd have a government or not. And uh, one year on, it's great to be back here in GMIT um, to see all my uh, colleagues and to see all the management of the, 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 the School of Building here and Engineering. I'd like to thank Martin for the invitation to be here this morning. Um, as well as that, I see a lot of students here, and uh, I just want to wish them all well. And I presume they're all studying here and doing their projects and handing up their CA in time and all that type of thing. So I, I hope you keep that going. Um, it, it's, uh, it's something that, um, being here for this conference, I think it's very important for the West of Ireland uh, that we have a conference like this. And I want to compliment Martin and GMIT for... Um, the leadership they've shown in holding this conference, uh, day one it was a small conference, seven years on it is a major event in the construction calendar in the west of Ireland. Um, I have to put my glasses now, I'm getting old uh, with the, for the reading. Um, I, suppose, I believe it's fair to say that the profound effect our built environment has on our daily lives of individuals and families is understood by everybody present at this event. The importance of the construction industry cannot be overstated for both individuals, society and the economy as a whole. And as Winston Churchill uh, once said, we shape our buildings and thereafter they shape us. Uh, since I have been appointed to serve uh, as a Minister of State, I have been struck by the range of responsibilities that the Office of Public Works has and its reach into so many parts of public policy. In relation to construction, my office is involved in, a, a, as well as the standard refurbishment and building of projects such as the um, garden station, which you see across the road. Uh, we have other projects which we do, and we, we deliver a lot of bespoke uh, projects and facilities. For instance, we, we uh, deliver uh, the development of Coast Guard stations in collaboration with the Irish Coast Guard service and the Department of Tourism, um, Transport and Sport. We also uh, have been involved in the Back Western Laboratory Complex in Kildare to prepare for the development of the State of Art uh, Forensic uh, Science Laboratory. The proposed facility has been designed not just to meet the current requirements in this fast evolving area of science but also future anticipated needs. We also have been involved in the uh, Special Olympics Ireland who have recently moved into the new headquarters at Abbottstown Sports Campix. This project showcases the very best of architectural design and environmental awareness as well as meeting the accommodation of around 90 staff and volunteers. State funding was provided for this project which was managed by my office and we have a particular affinity with this campus having managed a considerable number of projects over the years for Sports Ireland. Another aspect of the Office of Public Works has been in the area of building information modelling, and I know Jim O'Connor and his team will be happy that I mentioned them. The OPW is part of the review of digitising the construction industry. A how-to handbook for digital construction will be issued in the summer of this year. There are four pillars to BIM. There's public leadership, collaboration frameworks, grow capacity, communicate and foster. And I just want to state that the OPW will play an active role in this process as part of the National BIM Council. 2016 has proved to be uh, a, very, uh, a record year for the OPW in the area of flood relief. And by the way, uh, when I assumed the role as Minister for the Office of Public Works and Flood Relief, people uh, sometimes call me the Minister for Flooding, and I want to dispel that rumour. I do not cause flooding. I'm there to try and help uh, with the flood relief on it. Um, in 2016, the OPW spent 52 million, a record uh, expenditure on flood relief uh, projects around this country. And the importance of it is that it protects individuals, it protects families, communities and businesses who are most serious uh, at risk of flood flooding. And I think we can all recall only this time last year what was going on in this country in terms of flooding from last winter. And thanks be to God, so far this year, while we've had some increased rainfall in the last number of days, uh, I think uh, we've had a better year, a kinder year for people. We have made unprecedented uh, progress in terms of flood relief schemes. There are 35 schemes uh, in, at, 
different parts of design from construction, design, development, and seven new screen schemes commenced uh, uh, construction in 2016. We also have what we call the minor work schemes. 400 projects have been completed uh, since they were first brought in in 2009, and in 2016 alone, 82 applications were approved of, uh, with a combined expenditure of 4.3 million. And this br brings flood relief work in a quick way to many areas where they need small minor works up to a half a million. The other area of flooding, which was something that you will hear a lot more about coming forward, is the CFRAM, which is the Cashman Flood Risk Assessment and Management Programme. It is the single largest uh, management plan ever undertaken in the state in terms of flood relief. There are 20, 29 draft flood risk, plan, flood risk, uh, flood risk, uh, risk plans which are all coming to the end of their cycle and will be published hopefully by the end of March. They will then be approved by uh, Minister Dunahoo in the, uh, in, uh, at government level and then we will have 300 projects for which we will be uh, starting construction on. Uh, I know earlier that the President talked about getting works done quicker and getting, uh, cutting down the time between inception and, and construction of a project. The CFAM process will have cut about two years off the life of that particular process. So we will see more projects coming on board quicker. Um, and also it is my intention to crank up the expenditure on flood relief projects from the record 52 million this year up to 100 million per annum in the next two, two to three years. We have 430 million available in the capital works for, for uh, flood relief works, and I intend to spend every penny of that and not leave any of it in the exchequer. I am confident that the OPW is well positioned to bid on the strong performance that it has achieved in 2016 and that the target set for the capital investment plan will be achieved, and uh, we are working towards that in a very serious way. The President also mentioned the National Planning Framework, and I just want to talk about that for a few minutes because I think it's very important that, that we do. There is a need for good sustainable planning that, is a, that has the a support of a balanced regional development. Minister Coveney's department has just recently launched a consultation process for Ireland 2040, our plan, the National Planning Framework. It is a long-term 20-year strategy for the place-based development of Ireland up to 2040. Ireland 2040 adopts a new strategic planning and development framework for the coordination of a range of national, regional and local authority policies and activities, planning and investment, including housing. The national planning framework will address emerging trends and among the key elements that we must prepare and plan for into the future are a national population increase of around one million people. More than one-fifth of the population in this country will be over 65 years of age, including myself. More than 500,000 additional people will be at work. 500,000 homes needing location much, much closer to services and amenities. And we need re to rebuild our community and commercial life in the heart of our cities and towns and protect the many qualities of our rural communities. We are now seeking the public views on what the issues are and how we can together address sprawl and lopsided development, better utilisation of the potential of both urban and rural areas and avoid congestion and adverse impacts on people's lives and the environment. The Government's Rebuilding Ireland Plan has key objectives to create a functioning and sustainable housing system that is capable of providing homes for families and individuals in emergency homeless accommodation, producing a minimum of 25,000 housing units nationwide every year by 2020, responding post-2020 to meet future housing needs, delivering more social housing much faster and putting in place financially sustainable mechanisms to meet current and future requirements for social housing supports. The Government's commitment to providing £5.35 billion will go a long way to providing much-needed social housing with the provision of £200 million infrastructure fund to unlock the potential of key sites to deliver thousands of homes to the market. In terms of the wider housing market, the objective is to double housing output to deliver the 25,000 units per annum by 2021 
a range of actions are already underway in pursuit of this objective. The Planning and Development and Residential Tenancy Act 2016 enables large-scale projects with 100 homes plus or student accommodation units to be submitted directly to Board Planola from this year on. Their first tranche of the 23 key strategic development sites in major urban areas with the capacity to deliver houses on a large scale at, uh, at locations such as Dublin, Cork City, Cork County and the metropolitan areas of Limerick and Galway were announced at the end of last year. Following the initial success of the pilot scheme in Waterford and Cardo, uh, repair, the repair and releasing scheme is now being rolled out on a national basis. An additional £26 million is being provided to fund the scheme in 2017, which brings the total amount of investment available this year to £32 million. This additional investment will help to accelerate up to uh, 800 vacant properties which can be brought back into use for uh, new homes for families on local authority waiting lists, where the original target was 150. Pillar 5 of the Rebuilding Ireland uh, commits to developing a national vacant house reuse strategy by the first quarter of 2017. And this is informed by the census of 2016 data to inform the compilation of a register of vacant sites to identify the number, location and reasons for long-term vacancies. That is any building over six months which is vacant in high demand areas and set out a range of actions to bring back vacant uh, units into use. The primary objective of the vacant site levy under the Urban Re uh, Gen Regeneration Housing Act 2015 will to be act as a mechanism to incentivise the development of vacant and underutilised sites in urban areas for both, both the provision of housing and the development and renewal of land. This will enable sites to be brought into beneficial use rather than allowing them to remain dormant and undeveloped. The levy is not intended to be a revenue generating exercise. The vacant site levy will be charged from 2018 onwards with the first bills actually being collected in 2019. The levy will be charged at a rate of 3% of the market value of the site. A reduced or zero rate will apply in certain circumstances, for example in areas in need of regeneration. The other area which we come across, and I understand it well myself being a quantity surveyor, is the cost-effective cost design. Under Rebuilding Ireland, we have established a pathfinder competition that, that will examine new approaches to both affordable and quality residential delivery, having regard to the principles of sustainable communities, and which will champion best practice in the efficient and cost-effective design and construction. This is another small but important step towards achieving our objective of accelerating the housing provision. I mentioned about people, uh, the amount of people over 65 in our country. So we have what we know as smart ageing. The ageing of our population represents one of the most significant demographics and sociolithic developments that Ireland faces in the years ahead. With the number of people over 65 growing to 1.4 million by the year 2041. At the same time, the number of people over 80 is expected to quadruple from 128,000 in 2011 to over 480,000. As you can appreciate the implications of, for public policy in such areas as housing, health, urban and rural planning are considerable. Government policy is to support older people to live with dignity and independence in their own homes and communities for as long as possible. Against this background, under the Rebuilding Ireland programme, my colleague Minister Coveney recently launched the Homes for Smart Ageing Universal Design Challenge, which aims to stimulate and encourage the design and construction industry to be innovative in designing and delivering housing solutions for older people. The President mentioned earlier about balanced economic development and I suppose it's one of, one of the core drivers in, in, for me within government. And I'm delighted to say that the Atlantic Economic Corridor is to be developed along the western seaboard as part of the government's regeneration plan for rural Ireland. Representing 73,500 employees and 2,250 businesses along the west coast of Ireland, the Atlantic Economic Corridor seeks to create a city of scale from Limerick through to Galway to Sligo and on to Derry to match the Dublin-Cork in development infrastructure, 
attracting domestic and international investment and growing employment and wealth in a vibrant Western communities. The National Renovation Strategy, I have had the pleasure recently of making the welcoming address at the Irish Green Building Council's Deep Energy Renovation Initiative. Large-scale deep renovation can have a positive impact on job creation and a myriad of social benefits. Retrofitting Ireland's building stock requires a comprehensive national framework approach, which can have significant impact on the construction industry in a very positive manner. Near zero energy building requirements for public buildings come into force in 2018 and 2020 for all other buildings. The resulting report, Unlocking Ireland's Potential Towards Large-Scale Deep Energy uh, re Renovation, has proposed that the government and financial institutions introduce a series of financial and tax measures, such as lower interest green mortgages, to encourage homeowners, landlords and businesses to engage in deep renovation, which will significantly reduce their energy use. Significant progress has been made in accelerating energy efficiency in Ireland through measures such as attic insulation and energy conservation campaigns. However, the stats show that Ireland relies on high emission imported fuels to meet over 88% of our energy needs at a cost of 4.6 billion each and every year. This is not sustainable and we need to accelerate reduction in carbon emissions from electricity generation, the built environment and the transport sectors by at least 80% Compared to, 1990 levels, uh, compared to 1990 levels by 2050. Large amounts of durable energy savings from large-scale projects, in particular the deeper innovation of buildings and more sustainable new buildings, must be achieved. All new buildings must be nearly zero energy uh, buildings by 2020. As the Minister responsible for the Office of Public Works, I have in particular interest in this energy uh, efficiency in the public sector, the public sector has been given a challenging target of 33% energy efficiency improvement by the year 2020. By the end of 2015, we had improved it by 21%, lowering the cost by $619 million. The, e, uh, the European Commission requirements for carbon emissions reductions by 2020 and beyond will drive a programme of de deep retrofit to poorly insulated buildings. And the OPW have identified a number of its own buildings for a programme of deep retrofit to help Ireland meet its EU obligations. The OPW Energy Saving at Work Scheme has produced significant behavioural related savings in energy of 10 to 16 per cent. And I am working with uh, Minister uh, Dennis Nocton to ensure that the public sector has continued to reduce its energy usage to achieve its target. We are working with the Department of Communications. Um, on a scheme to uh, carry out deeper innovations to a number of civil service buildings and a three million uh, has been put into that for this year. The budget 2017 has allocated 100 million to energy projects which are projected to save 116,000 tonnes of carbon emissions every year, supporting about 3,000 jobs. The area for apprenticeships has been recognised by the government and the skill shortage in the construction industry has also been recognised. And we have to also address the area of youth unemployment. It is against this background that SOLAS, the Further Education and Training Agency, is preparing an overhaul of apprenticeships. As you were, the Minister <coughs> for Education and Skills, Richard Bruton, together with the Minister of State for Training, Skills and Innovation, John Halligan, re recently launched the government's plan to expand apprenticeships in Ireland, delivering 50,000 apprenticeships and trainee registrations by 2020. The government's large-scale investment programme, the Infrastructure and Capital Investment Plan 2016-2021, to will support forth forecast period growth and will be the action, as will the Action Plan for Rural uh, Development. Under the Capital Plan, we, we plan to invest £42 billion in developing major infrastructure projects in the residential area, energy, transport and healthcare sectors and education through to 2021. And I think the, uh, at this stage the review of that capital programme is taking place uh, and we will have the results of that by September of this year. 
As a quantity surveyor, I must also say to you that one of the areas that it will be a challenge to us going forward is the area of uh, tender inflation. The latest tender price index show, uh, published by the Society of Charter Surveyors Ireland shows that construction tender prices have increased by 2.9% in the second half of 2016. According to the SCSI's index prices increased by 6.3% for the year as a whole. In recent years, the trend in tender prices has been one of consistent increases. They rose by 5.5% last year and 5% in 2014, and the SCSI are predicting that this will continue in the short term, with a rise of 3% forecast for 2017. This is something that will need careful monitoring, as prices can have a knock-on effect on house building costs. Indeed, chartered quant surveyors would be best placed to ensure the appropriate cost control plans are put in place to counteract such price increases. There are important times in terms of the range of linked challenges and policy responses that we as a government have put in place to support the construction industry in the years ahead. We as a government need to deliver on these plans, but we need also to do so in a way that leaves a positive legacy when we look back in 20 years' time. The SRI's latest economic projections forecast a baseline sustainable growth rate for the Irish economy of 3% per annum between now and 2025. Depending on the final form of the Brexit takes, the baseline scenario may vary upwards or downwards. The labour market continues to improve. The live register rate has fallen to below 7%. It's actually at 6.6% for the first time since July 2008. The, the ESRI are predicting that this will fall to just over 6% over the medium term. In relation to the demand for housing, the ESRI projects that the demand for housing will move to 30,000 homes per annum by 2024. According to the Construction Industry Federation, projects to the value of almost 19 billion will commence or conclude over the next 12 months. A recent CIF commission commissioned economic analysis forecast that there would be 9% annual growth on average in the construction industry, reaching 20 billion output by 2020. It can potentially imply 213,000 direct employees, making it the largest job generator in our communities around the economy. We need to act fast to keep pace with the current and emerging demands for homes and to avoid the housing supply problem, itself became, uh, which in itself has become a drag on our economy. The challenge will require us all, the government, local authorities, approved housing bodies, architects, construction professionals, planners, builders and developers, <coughs> to proactively respond to the housing and commercial supply challenge in order to meet the need of our citizens now and into the future. I hope that this conference will allow us the opportunity to address the many positive challenges that await us over the next decade in the construction industry. And just before I finish, I want to say that for the students who are here, the opportunities that are arising from the figures I have given there are enormous. There is the reason for being in education and getting your degrees is that the world is your oyster. And that begins here in Ireland and hopefully into the future your jobs will be here in the west of Ireland, not just in Dublin. And that's what the Atlantic Economic uh, Corridor is all about. So I look forward to engaging with you and I'm delighted to be here with you. Thank you very much.